Hey guys, welcome back to Sapper Steel Forge. It's a beautiful day and we're going to have some fun. I am super excited today because I get to do something that I really love. I had a customer order a knife, a standard one off the shop, but then when we get to talking about the specs of it, what he really wants is something really, really different. And I love that. I, it makes me super excited because I like to, to really change things up in, in custom. And that's why we get new knives for the shop a lot of times. And this particular one is something I had been thinking about for a long time for myself and had just not gotten around to doing. He ordered the 9-inch Woodsman, which you've all seen on the, on, the, on the shop. Or if you haven't, go check it out on the Etsy shop. You might love it. But what he really, really wanted was a frontiersman's knife like was used in the wonderful movie last of the mohicans by the legendary actor daniel day lewis that knife is iconic it was made by an absolutely legendary blacksmith right here in north carolina daniel winkler now i'm not going to try to to, to remake that man's work i i'm not that good what i'm going to do today is we're going to forge out something in that same spirit. So it's going to uh, it's going to have the same general shape. It's going to, going to function the same. So it's not going to be the same 9-inch woodsman. It's going to be way more like that frontiersman's knife. So it's going to be great. All right, guys. So step one to making this thing a proper frontiersman's knife is to use the right materials. Now, Back in those days, they would have scrounged any bit of iron or steel they could find. And using an old plow that was broken to make a knife would have been super common. So we're going to do something very much the same. <laughs> so we're going to use a piece of an old plow tractor to make this knife. So it's going to be in that same spirit. And uh, so, you know, stick around. It's going to be fun.
anyways, um, I thought now would be a really good time to kind of uh, stop and explain a, a good bit of uh, what you've probably already seen. So I, I just wanted to, you know, stop, go back, and, and talk about it a little bit. Um, with this particular project, uh, a lot of things I, I, I made decisions on, things I wanted to do, things I wanted to try. Um, I really wanted to do it in, in a real frontier style. And that doesn't mean that, you know, I, I get rid of all my equipment. But what it does mean is that uh, I use a, a very minimalist style of, uh, you know, uh, steel selection. Uh, the the steel I used was, uh, you know, of course, recycled. But uh, also, it was, uh, it was cut down to just about the right size already, which would have been fairly common. You, you would, you know, you take whatever piece you could get and you forged it out. So what ended up happening was... Uh, because it was only a certain width because of the holes in the original piece, I had to bevel it and to bring it, make it wider. And uh, there was a groove cut in it, so I had to flatten all that out. And, uh, you know, what ends up happening is it makes a very thin knife, which would be very common for the time. You wouldn't waste a lot of steel like that. Uh, not saying I don't love, you know, the movie Crocodile Dundee, because I do, but that knife would have been, you know, a, a rarity on the frontier because there's so much steel just there. You could have made two, three knives out of that. Uh, you know, knives in the frontier times, especially with you talking like, you know, the French trappers during the French and Indian War, would have looked more like uh, chef's knives. It would have been kitchen knives. Uh, you know, things like that, butcher knives were, were common use because you didn't want to carry a bunch of extra stuff with you. If you need four knives to, to clean an animal, you've got to carry four knives. So you don't do that. You, you make your one tool work for everything. And the uh, same with, you know, the, the amount of steel. They're not going to carry a bunch of steel around. They're, they're going to have what they've got. And so you, you really, you know, made use of that. Uh, same with the other materials. What I've done with the handle, number one, is I did a hidden tang, which would have, again, been very common at the time because steel, you know, your conservation of that, that steel, which this one's a very long blade anyways. It's a, it's almost 10-inch blade on there, and uh, normally you'd have seen like a 6 or 7-inch blade. Uh, the one from the movie was 7 inches, so that's that's pretty common. Uh, same thing with the, the one from the movie had a deer bone for uh, a handle and it had a hidden tang. Now, I don't have any deer bones laying around and, you know, we discussed this with a customer and it was fine. So what I have used is a stick of crepe myrtle. It's a very light, very strong wood. It's uh, beautiful. It polishes it up really nicely. Very bright, uh, almost uh, almost white, it, you know, pale yellow. So um, what I did was cut down an end of a stick that was already broken so that it could have that kind of uh, that broken end on there, almost like, you know, the end of a bone. And so what I did was slot that with the table saw, and then once it fitted up to the tang, and I'm going to sand it a little better so that it fits nice and tight, then we'll go in, and uh, I've already drilled the holes for for uh, uh, a pin. And what I'll probably do with it for the pin is repurpose a nail, which again would have been very common at the time. You know, you, you, you use what you had. Uh, so uh, you know, it, for a mechanical uh, hold, you know, a pin would be a, a stick or a nail if you had one. So that's what we're doing with it. So from here, uh, this point uh, forward. I'm going to, you know, finish uh, slotting up the uh, the handle, making it fit to the tang real well. And then we are going to epoxy it. That, of course, uh, that time period, it wouldn't have been. It, it would have, if they had used anything sticky, it would have been like pine tar or resin or something of that nature. Some sinew. Rawhide was really good for connections. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to use epoxy. It's what I've got, and I know it's strong. But we, we will uh, shape it down and, and leave that natural end on there. We're going to repurpose a nail for the pin. And then we'll, uh, we'll do the wrap. Uh, I'm thinking like thread, maybe some wax thread or something. I haven't really decided yet. 
But the you know the, the the movie knife had a thread wrap on it, so I'll probably do something very similar. Anyhow, that's what we're doing. That's where we're at. Uh, so you know you've seen things that uh, didn't look like my normal. It's it's because it's not. It, it's something very new. But at the end of this, we are going to be offering this as the new Frontiersman's knife. So this will be something that's on the Etsy shop. Uh, a little bit different. I'm probably only going to offer it in a 7-inch blade because that is more traditional. And frankly, a 9-inch or 10-inch blade is huge. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, again, a little bit different than, than the usual. Uh, I'm going to take the, the handle back off there and I'm going to shape it down some. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to go ahead and drill it for a second pin. We'll, we'll just use two nails. Better safe than sorry, you know. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to bring it to the big boy here that, that finally works again. It was broken for a very long time. You see, we kind of rigged up something, but it works. And so, awesome.
feel a need to say again that I was really, really not trying to do an imitation of the original knife by Daniel Winkler because I'm not him. And, and that was a beautiful knife. Love that movie. You know, Daniel Day-Lewis is a legendary actor. But what I wanted to do was create something that was in that same spirit, something that was frontier-like. And uh, I think I've done it, but, you know, it's up to the, the customer, of course. And so here she is. Took the wire wheel to it, you know, really stripped it down, give it that kind of rough bone appearance. Uh, I did put the leather wrap up here. That is just to keep the hand from sliding up. We don't want anybody's hand going up that blade. I said it's not sharp yet, but it will be soon. Uh, you know, they got the little string wrap here. It was part of the original, so we put it on there. It kind of gives you a little bit of grip. It, it actually does really help to, to kind of create that, that little curve in there that, that really sits the hand and uh, makes it a very useful knife uh, for, the, for the size of it. it. It's very easy to wield. And it's a very thin blade, so it's, it's light. It's kind of fast. I, I could see using something like this, you know, as a daily tool. You, you could, you know, hack some of the kindling. You could go hunting with this thing. And if need be, you know, defend yourself in a full So let's Oh my god uh if y'all hear that loud noise it's my heart pounding so there's there's not there's no glint there's no gleaming this thing is still razor sharp dude so hey customer it works great <laughs> well that's it folks um yeah she's done it's a very unique knife i i I'm debating on, on offering it. Uh, well, we'll see. I, I'll put it on the shop and we'll see if anybody else is interested in it. I really like it. I hope the customer does too. But uh, it is sharp. I don't know if y'all could see it, but it, it shaved the hairs real nice. It is it's straight. It, it's surprisingly comfortable. That is, it's crazy how well that really works. These guys knew something, you know, they, they grab a stick, stick it on there, and go to work. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get this up as soon as possible. Like, subscribe, visit us on the Etsy shop. We're, we're doing more stuff all the time. And, uh, you know, we got a TikTok now, Instagram, uh, you know, trying to do this whole social media thing. But, uh, hey, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate all you guys, and y'all have a good one. Oh